What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Thursday edition of Back Your Play with Q. As always, I'm your host, Rich Canunis, hashtag BYP. Check us out on social media, IG, Twitter, at Rich Q on Q. And of course, do not forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q. All right, my guy who handles every gamut of college sports for on three sports. There he is. He's donning the uh, Rutgers <laughs> wrestling gear. That, of course, is uh, our good friend, Nick Costco. As always, give him a follow on Twitter, at Nick Costco 59 Kind enough to join us for a couple moments on a Thursday edition of BYP. What's going on, pal? How are you? I'm doing good, Rich. Uh, it was a rough weekend for Rutgers wrestling uh, against Northwestern last Sunday, but they have Maryland on uh, this Sunday at College Park. Uh, I'm not on the call again. You know, uh, Big Ten Network is actually picking up a couple more matches, so uh, I'm not back on the air for them until February 10th when they host Penn State, so that'll be a good time, but hopefully a bounce back uh, for them. I'm sure we'll get into uh, NFL stuff as well. I, I was yeah. actually feeling much better <laughs> last weekend about the NFL than uh, Rutgers wrestling. Well, yeah, I would imagine so, right, with the uh, Eagles and the Chiefs uh, advancing to the Super Bowl. We'll get into that. We'll get into Brady's retirement second time around. Uh, top 25 college hoops. You got some good games, uh, some good uh, docket of games this weekend as well. Just a couple things that uh, stand out for me. I want to get your thoughts on a couple of these games. Uh, you've got some good SEC matchups, uh, number four, Alabama against LSU. We've got Purdue and Indiana. That on paper looks like it's a good matchup. Uh, Texas, we talked a little bit about them last week, Tennessee. We saw what happened the other night with Tennessee. Texas and K-State, uh, where are you at right now with some of these games? Uh, Kansas as well, and uh, Iowa State on the docket. Uh, just a couple of quick takeaways. Again, I think Purdue, uh, as we've talked about now for, I think, a week or two, has yep. been the dominant team in college basketball, or I would say at least that that de facto dominant team in college basketball. They're, they're number one. I mean, I, I was seeing some tweets when they played Penn State the other night, and then it, it was like, oh, yeah, Penn State missed out on the upset bet. I saw a couple of reports. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they, they, they lost by like 20 points or wherever, wherever that final score was the other night. I'm just like, maybe Penn State gave them a scare, maybe uh, right. out of the locker room. But <laughs> But Purdue, again, is the best team in college basketball right now. I figured there'd be more of an argument uh, last week when the AP poll came out, but they're 21-1 and one now. I mean, they're they're they're, they're great. Yeah. Zach Eady is the best player in college basketball right now, in my mind. I mean, obviously, I've uh, had to split my time between college football, college wrestling, and college basketball all at once right now because it's a, you know, college athletics obviously never end, even in the summer. We have a small little summer break, of course, for school. But um, the way I'm looking at it, Purdue's the best team. Uh, Tennessee got knocked off by Florida, which was – a little surprising. Uh, obviously, Florida just kind of rolled through them a little bit. So, uh, again, looking back at Hugh Sim, the Alabamas, uh, Kansas yep. bounced back, good win over Kansas State as well. That was a top 10 matchup. So, they're pretty evenly matched. So, it's nothing against Kansas State. Just Kansas uh, was better that night. They split their meetings. So, uh, those are my biggest takeaways. But, I mean, I would say you, you got to say Purdue is – not far and away the best team, but they're easily the best team uh, by the rankings, by their recent results on paper, and just based on what we've seen throughout the course of between 20 and 24 games, however, however many you've played, uh, Purdue is, I would say, your easy choice for number one right now. Yeah, I don't think there's any debate really when it comes to it. I mean, people will still try to argue Alabama. They've got three losses. They'll argue uh, Houston. Uh, for my estimation, you mentioned Edie. I think he's the uh, consensus player of the year right now. I mean, he's a walking double-double. He plays both ends of the floor. They have the guard play. We know that. They have Indiana over the weekend, ranked 21st, 15 and 7, 11, 3 at home. They got a couple of nice players in their forward, Davis, Xavier Johnson. He's a pretty good guard. They just saw their five-game winning streak uh, get snapped. To Maryland. So, you know, good spot, Indiana. Maybe they cover the nut, maybe they cover the number. I don't know. But Purdue just has that look and feel of a team that's going to make a really deep run uh into March. Yeah, I would say so is the way it is right now. I mean, they're kind of not running away with the Big Ten, but I believe in my last look at my last brief look at the uh, standings, uh they were ahead by two or three games now in that first place. You know, you have a couple teams like uh, like, like like Rutgers, for instance, was, was chasing them. I know they had a big win uh, last night over Minnesota. But, you know, Minnesota's towards the bottom of the Big Ten as well. I, you know, I'm only tooting my uh, alma mater's horn a little bit there. And, you know, maybe they'll get back into the top 25. But, yeah, I mean, Purdue owns the Big Ten right now. Uh, they should be able to make a deep run in March, obviously. You take the conference tournaments a little bit with a grain of salt only sure. because – you never know. Purdue can get knocked off in the semis or maybe they, they lose in the finals and maybe they don't get the number one seed or maybe they right. still lose in the Big Ten finals and they still get a number one seed in one of the four regions in March Madness. So obviously you have to wait till the big dance itself to really see, to really uh, maybe make your actual pick about the bullet yeah. makers. But I would say, you know, how I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about, uh, you know, just use Rutgers as an example, the way they were playing, they got back to the 20 or top 25, you know, 
a team like that playing really well in the Big Ten has not has had a pretty uh, good amount of wins or good wins, I should say. You know, you get to the Sweet 16. If you're Purdue, I mean, you're thinking nothing less than a Final Four appearance. This Absolutely, because you've been number one uh, a few a handful of times this year. But now this, this this seems like the most consistent time of the year where Purdue is going to be that number one team in the country. And until somebody knocks them off or you see a team like Alabama or Houston just not lose again until the tournament, then I would say Purdue's your number one team. And I would say a minimum, Matt Painter and company need to get to the final four to really justify a great year. I think sometimes when you look at these teams that have these outstanding starts, I mean, you look at Alabama in 19-3, you look at Tennessee, I think they're 18-4. and four. We already documented uh, Purdue. We've spoken about the Houston Cougars as well. What, what I look for is, Sometimes a loss late can help you as crazy as it sounds, especially when you're going in with a 12, 13, mm-hmm. 14 game winning streak and you rip through the conference tournament, you cut down the net, you win your conference title, and then you get into March Madness because it's a one and done scenario. Sometimes you got to, I know it's kind of goofy to say, but sometimes you got to take that early L, so to speak, before you get into the dance, maybe humble yourself, reassess. But you're right. Those teams we mentioned, especially Purdue, it's cutting down the net or nothing this year. I mean, it's feast or famine. You can make the case for Tennessee, Houston, Alabama. You know, we can throw other teams into the mix as well, but I definitely think it's there. They're the most complete and deep team. If I were to ask you right now, though, you look at some of these other matchups, uh, Virginia 17 and three in the ACC, good mark of nine and two. They got Va Tech. Uh, Va Tech has really just stunk up the joint in conference play three and eight. Uh, You've got Kansas, Iowa State, uh, you've got Tennessee trying to bounce back. We mentioned K-State. They have a pretty good ranking, right? So I'm throwing a couple teams at you right now. Texas, 18 and four. Mm-hmm. They won three out of four. Uh, what, which one of those teams you think can kind of upset the apple cart or maybe be a sleeper? Because we're always highlighting Purdue, but give me a team or two that's not Alabama, Tennessee, or Houston, aside from Purdue that you think can make some noise. I mean, I guess you got to go with UCLA. I know they had a tough loss in their last game out against USC. It's not, I mean, that's not what you exactly want, but Mick Cronin has done a great job with that program. It was what, I think, if memory serves correct, it was two or three years ago they made the Final Four as a 10 seed or an 11 seed. My math math might might not be right there, but they made that run to the Final Four. You know, obviously they lost that game to uh, Gonzaga uh, at the buzzer in that epic semifinal game uh, in the NCAA tournament. But I would say UCLA, just, just by the way they're coached and the way Mick Cronin is able to, really get that program rolling. I mean, they're really good. I mean, again, that loss to USC is probably going to drop a little bit in the top 25. But, I mean, you mentioned it before how, in the general sense, you might want – not that you want to lose, obviously, but if you get that loss, you know, earlier in the season, midway yes. this year, even late in the season, if it's before the tournament play, in, in whether it's conference play or obviously if it's March Madness, you're out. But, if, you know, if it's in conference play in the tournament or if it's late in the regular season, it's almost like – it's a sense of relief because we've seen how hard it is to go undefeated in college basketball. We've seen Kentucky try to do it uh, within recent memory, which I mean, I can go back to a mid major Wichita state. What was that within the last, it was within the last 10 years, 10 years, they were undefeated. They got bounced in the second round. So, you know, it's the, the, the pressure is on you to keep winning. Even if you're, even if you're Purdue, you're 21 and one, what if they don't lose until March Madness, like or, or the NCAA tournament. Let's just say they win the Big Ten, and that team is what? I mean, at, at that point, you play 31 games. You know, they're, they're 30 and one, maybe even 29 and two. Then you win three games in the Big Ten tournament. This team could be 32 and two or 33 and one, right around those parts. And it's like, what if they get upset in the second round? It's totally possible yes. for that to happen as a number one seed. We've seen it plenty of times. We've seen the story before. So. But maybe a team like UCLA losing to your in-state rival on the road, maybe it's a bit of a wake-up call. So I would call UCLA maybe a little bit of a sleeper right now as I like the way Mick Cronin coaches and what they've done over the past couple of years. Now, am I going to say they're going to run for the Final Four? Not necessarily, but I would say you know watch out for UCLA just because they lost to USC uh, just a couple of days ago. I, mean, I would not rule them out from making a little bit of a run now, You know, making some noise again in March Madness. Yeah, those are interesting points you bring up. And you're right, sometimes that loss kind of helps you. And because we're seeing even this season, it's kind of fluky and goofy when it comes from a, a betting standpoint. A lot of upsets, we're seeing teams that are 15, 16, 17, 18 point dogs that are winning games flat out, outright. Right, so and, just to, and just yeah. to add on to that too, you go with, uh, you know, you go to the college football model, you can kind of tell who's going to win week in and week out. You only play the 12 games and then you have your conference championship games. You pretty much knew this year who was going to make the college football playoff. It's harder to pick upsets in college football. Now they do happen, 
Obviously, we saw Tennessee go down. We saw Tennessee even beat Alabama, you know, and vice versa. We see, we've seen a couple of uh, big upsets this year in college football, but college basketball is so random. Yes, you have your great teams, and your great teams are going to beat up on the small teams. Those upsets won't really happen until in tournament play where it's the one and done and you're going for broke there. Regular season, it could be fluky. You know, maybe you have an off night. You lose two in a row to who you, you really shouldn't have. It, it, it's almost like it, it's hard to pick in the regular season, then it's harder to pick it in the tournament, obviously. But then on the flip side, it's almost like, how do you predict it in the regular season? Because I wouldn't have picked UCLA right. to lose to USC the other night. I wouldn't have picked – and obviously, Penn State didn't beat Purdue. But I, w- I wouldn't have picked what? Penn State to beat Purdue at all, or I wouldn't have picked Houston. Florida to beat Tennessee. Yeah. So, or Houston, uh, Temple, Rutgers, Purdue. You- right. I mean, it, 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 as a – you know, it, even in my biased approach uh, where I'm talking about uh, the Scarlet Knights, like could I say, yeah, I can see them beating them because they did it last year at the buzzer, but that was at home. Going to Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, am I going to see that? No, I wouldn't pick that. No. Not necessarily. No. Would I be shocked if it happens? No, not really. But, you know, just taking the cap off, too, I'd be like, no, I'm not picking them to do that. And that happens to be Purdue's only law. So it's like, what? where, where does Purdue go? I mean, I, you know, we can go, we can talk in circles about Purdue, but it, it's just one of those things where college basketball is that much more fluky, flukier than college football. Yep, I agree 100%. Midway through a Thursday edition of BYP, Rich Quinones here, Nick Costco from On3 Sports. Joining us, we'll take a timeout. When we come back on the other side, we got to go to the gridiron, got to go to NFL, Super Bowl Sunday right around the corner. We'll kind of recap Championship Sunday, which was a snooze fest if you were a betting man when it came to the Eagles and the 49ers. Hopefully you put a little coin in the pocket and you backed your place, so to speak. AFC, a little different. Tom Brady's retirement as well. We'll come back on the other side right after this.